Hello, I'm Jacob and this is the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors. Today we are going to see how far this SE Hunglis 2 will go. You may notice that this knife is already broken. I'll put a link to the original break right up here. Now, for most knives, that might be the end of the story. And by the way, for anybody who's not going to watch that link, uh, this knife went through far, far more than realistically most knives will. But for most knives, breaking like this is pretty much the end of the day. You're going to call the manufacturer, you're going to get a new knife, game over. But the SE Hunglis 2 is, I think, indisputably a survival knife. And for a survival knife, breakage likely might be only the beginning of the story. I believe that many of us have a fantasy about what survival is. Kind of something like Alone on the History Channel. You're out by yourself for whatever reason and you're living off the land to whatever capacity. Um, the reality of survival is not typically like that. So what I want you to do is close your eyes. Imagine that you just opened your eyes. You don't really remember where you are. You remember you're driving through Canada somewhere, but right now you're trapped in your vehicle and you can't get out. This might be a more realistic scenario where a true survival situation could occur. Hopefully you're not injured, but maybe you have to use the knife that you keep in your vehicle to pry something open to get out and you happen to get a break just like this. Can you send that knife back to the warranty? I'm sorry, back to the manufacturer? No, your survival situation just started. Emergency personnel might not be able to get to you for 12 to 24 hours. So today, it's raining right now, uh, but everything is frozen. It's really weird and it's supposed to start snowing. It's really, really quite cold. Um, and so to survive until EMS gets there or rescue gets there, you have to make a fire. Is this survival knife going to be able, being already broken, to scrape tinder, to do fine work, feather sticks, to chop, or even to baton? That's what we're going to find out today. So um, I feel completely confident, you know, you saw me scraping some tinder, chopping some of this incredibly hard frozen wood, um, but we're going to go back to what initially broke this knife, which is batoning extremely hard, nasty stuff. Now in a survival situation, would I be batoning this? No, but what we're doing, <laughs> what we're doing today is we're testing 
So will this broken SE get through this incredibly hard knotted piece of who knows what, I'm just gonna call it butt stain wood. Um, now in real life, if you were batoning, you would be batoning cedar, pine, dead stuff that was gonna be conducive to obviously making a fire and staying warm. But we are testing the blade, so we're taking it to the next level, and let's see if uh, let's see if it breaks. Also, we're not I believe the SE is famous primarily for two things. Number one is their Rowan heat treat, and number two, their unbeatable warranty. You break it, they replace it. It's as simple as that, and they truly believe in their blades because of the Rowan heat treat. And what that is, is these Etsy knives have a differential heat treat, which means the spine is a little bit softer than the edge, but still hard enough to strike a ferro rod and the edge obviously is harder. And Rowan has this heat treat down to the absolute second and degree to the point where SE absolutely trusts these knives for what they're intended to do and beyond. Now, I was kind of afraid that with a break through this blade to this depth, that the shock from chopping, especially this hard wood, um, might cause it to break the rest of the way through, but that spine is thick enough and soft enough so that that was not the case. And even through some of this really rough batoning, the blades, it's fine. It's re still ready to go. So what we're going to do now, um, we're going to take it up a notch, and what Justin's going to do, he's going to chop into a living log, then baton down through it. So uh, that's going to be a fairly extreme test, and if it does not break through that, now that we know, because at this point, this SE, I have no question, I can do my feather sticks, I can do my chopping, and if I need to, I can do my realistic batoning, no question. So let's take it to the next level, because by the end of the video, this knife will be broken. Remember kids, always carry a chainsaw with you in the woods. <laughs> One thing to baton is some firewood, quite another to baton a live tree. <laughs> yeah man, that's a roof shingle right there. That's pretty cool, I shouldn't have come. Yeah. I think we need to do something harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So the knife still didn't break. Uh, Justin, the master of destruction, <laughs> did not break this knife going down through chopping, doing all this stuff through the living log. So uh, he has devised an even more over-the-top test for this thing that could very well end in his potential injury. So uh, the important part of a survival knife, people talk about what a knife is and isn't and what it is and isn't designed for, but when you talk about a survival knife, the knife needs to be designed to hold up to anything that you might need to do to survive. That means that typical knife tasks is no longer even a consideration. So, wait till you see what he has in store for this blade next. All right, so we've passed the point of just utter ridiculousness already. Um, so, we kind of got to the point where we're like, okay, what what is gonna get this thing to break within the realm of something that is not probable, but feasible. Um, so we're kind of looking at this rock and thinking in terms of, you know, a narrow canyon getting stuck down there. Um, you know, there's about to be a flash flood or something and I got to get out of here, right? Now, would I probably do that? No, I wouldn't shove my knife into this crack. But <laughs> if that's all I had, it might be in the realm of possibility. You know, it, crazy emergency situations call for crazy things. So um, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove this dude all the way in or try to shove it all the way in here. Find a slot. All the way up. And it's, well, I guess we should have tested that before. <laughs> All right, we'll just go ahead and do this. Right at the break and... Right at the break. And uh, what I'm gonna attempt to do is I weigh about 200 and so pounds, 210, something like that. What I'm gonna attempt to do is just have this thing hold my weight um, without breaking. I'm also gonna cover my eyes just in case. I know this is gonna look, look pretty crazy, but just uh just for safety's sake and jacob you might want to back up <laughs> are you serious right now <laughs> watch your elbows can you see the whole thing yeah okay that's like i said that's pretty crazy so you can obviously see that this the stress point where it's been already been broken um is exposed we don't have the handle all the way in and it's still holding up you know 210 pounds something like that and realistically it's not bent any more than it was already um so i don't know what we got to do to get this thing to break but uh we're gonna try so now what I'm going to try to do is to climb up here and kind of use this thing as a foothold. Um, I got this rope here just in case I slip and fall so that I don't, uh, don't damage myself too much. I know a lot of you watching this are thinking, I hope this dude breaks his neck, but that's not very nice. <laughs> See if we can't get over here. Oh. oh, this is why you don't use knives or footholds. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, so earlier, Jacob asked me. He's like, we're going to break this thing today, right? And I was like, seriously, is that a serious question? <laughs> maybe that was, uh, maybe that was a little bit of a strange question. Still, no bent. I mean, you could see how it was flexing. I was bouncing up and down on it. Uh, I might have to take this to the whole, whole new, new level. 
This is ridiculous. I am, uh, for those of you who don't know, after we did the initial test, um, I was so impressed with this thing that I actually bought one. Uh, my fiance bought one for me anyway. But uh, this is this is a pretty awesome piece of steel with a handle on it. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a pretty practical guy. I think of knives as a sharpened piece of steel with a handle on them. But this is a pretty impressive one so far. So I got to think up something new that we can actually get this thing broken. Heck yeah. All right, take 37. <laughs> Try 37 to break the Hungless 2. I don't think we're getting this thing out. <laughs> I just thought about that. I'm like, hmm. I might just have to All send right. them the handle. You ready? Get stand more. Yeah, this side. That looked a little uncomfortable. Yeah, that didn't feel good. Especially as cold as it is. Yeah. <sighs> oh. <laughs> when that breaks, don't put that pommel through your forehead. Right. This is stupid. This is... Just... We need a cheater bar. Oh. Didn't even make a dent, man. I like, didn't even bend it in it at all. We're gonna have to get more creative. being able to do this with yours. <laughs> Ooh, I bit the tip. Hooray for me. <laughs> there you go. We did Even something. Still, I did something. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, but, like we've talked about, I don't know how many times, to ad nauseum, almost. You know, I'd much rather have a tip that bends mm -hmm. a little bit than mm -hmm. just breaks right off. Because... Mm -hmm. um, I can just simply bend it back yep. and then, you know, no worries. But, uh, dude. And the amazing thing to me is that it's not dull. Right. You know what I mean? It, like, it's still sharp. Now, it's not... I'm not going to shave a baby with it, but it's still sharp, man. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is insane, insane, insane. All right, well, let's think up the next thing. Hang on. You ready? Yeah. Bushcraft CrossFit, take one. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm starting to hate this knife. Yep. Oh, we did something. Whoa. We did something. We made the new SE Cleaver. <laughs> it didn't break at the original no. break. <laughs> this... Oh, is that the, is that how they made the cleaver? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't break at the original break. Oh my goodness. Look at that grain structure. That is That is crazy. I guess it makes sense that it didn't break at the original break though because Yeah, we if we had I'm, it in all the way it would have Look at that grain structure. Looks yeah. pretty fine. That is crazy. Let me see that, the the end there. 
That is nuts. And still, and st a usable knife. Right, right. Golly. So basically in a survival situation, if you have an Etsy Hungless 2, you will have a knife throughout the entire situation. No matter what you do to it. Even in the realm of just stupid. being ridiculously stupid. Which is what we specialize in. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I'm I'm doubly sold, man. I might go buy another one. <laughs> well, I guess I wouldn't really need another one. Ever. Yeah, right. Wow. I wish I could keep it. <laughs> so uh Essie knows that we are doing this video here. I'll be sending this back to them. I'll get some more pictures of the carnage that you'll be able to see on my Instagram. Also, make sure to check out Justin's Instagram and YouTube. His links will be in the description box below. But uh, we'll get this thing cleaned up and get all the pictures we can get. And uh, Try to dig that tip out. I guess. <laughs> we'll, baton? We'll, bat <laughs> we'll baton it. Yeah. There you go. Okay, guys. Here's the blade after the abuse. Actually, a lot of this damage, well, not here on the scale, this is from the rock, but a lot of this damage on the blade here was from the process of trying to get this tip out. We wanted to get this tip out to, uh, not only to show you, but to send it to Essie. So we pulled it out of that log using this knife. It was rather brutal, but there you have it, guys. Even after all of that abuse, this edge damage is all from smacking on this tip to try and get this tip out. Even after all of that abuse, after we snapped the tip in a survival situation, we still had a usable knife and could not get this break to continue all the way. So for the first time in the history of this channel, this knife is the Prepper's Bunker Outdoors approved? He ain't dead smart. Played by the United States Marine Fife and the Drum Corps.